At the 2025 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, there were several Chinese EVs on display. Zeker was founded in 2021 and is one of many sub-brands produced by Geely. I took a close look at their 001 FR that outputs 1,265 brake horsepower and does 0 to 60 in about 2 seconds. Gawked at the Ultra Lux 009 Grand MPV and got a real kick out of the brand new Mix minivan. The brand showed off their powertrain, battery pack, and innovative charging hardware. All right, now also in the Zeker booth, they have Zeker Power, which is a separate subdivision of the brand. And essentially it's a lot of different things, but one thing is charging. And we just spoke to a representative and they said that the first generation of their charging equipment could get up to 360 kilowatts, which is impressive to think of that. But now they're all the way up to 800 kilowatts. This can deliver up to a thousand volts. And what he has told us is that from the first generation, they actually doubled the capacity of liquid cooling in the cables here so that they can support those higher speeds. The representative told us that they can charge a vehicle from zero to a hundred percent in just under 12 minutes, which is super impressive. The fastest charging vehicle that they have in their lineup is the 007, which isn't on display here, but that can take 600 kilowatts. And with 800 kilowatts, it just seems like if they're at this stage, who knows what the future holds. It's exciting to see what they have going on here at Zeker. But I want to show you something else over here, which is really cool. Part of the Zeker power division as well. And that is a robotic arm for charging. So this is really going to enable autonomous vehicles to be able to pull up. Say you're going to an airport. It drops you right off at the front door. The car will go park itself. And then this will be able to plug it in, which is super exciting. And He's going to open up the door for us to check it out. So you can see the charging port here and it's going to line it up and plug it right in. Wow, that is amazing. And there you go. Now your Zeker is charging up. I really hope this technology can make it here one day. It was a thrill to spend time up close with Zeker's lineup. If only there were some way I could talk to experts from the company. Well, hey guys, you will not believe where I'm at. I'm actually sitting inside a Zeker mix right now, and I have two people from Zeker with me. I have Gustav who is head of design here and I also have Simon who is in charge of digital design at the brand and this is really cool to be sitting in a product like this because we obviously don't have this here in North America. So I really want to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about your methodology in designing vehicles, especially considering you're expanding into global markets. So I'll start with you Gustav. Yeah, hi. First of all, foremost, thank you so much for being here. It's for us, first time in the States and first time in CS. It's super exciting to just be here. Um, I think what we are sort of doing is that we are trying to be somewhat provocative in the whole auto industry. We're sitting right now in the Seeker Mix, which doesn't have a B-pillar, which basically it creates a completely different experience of the vehicle. As you can see, we're sitting just next to each other like this, uh, and it creates this kind of social haven. Uh, almost. Absolutely. And when we talk about like the digital experience here, that's a pretty big realm. And we're seeing now at CES, especially that there are tons of software defined vehicles that are coming out. So can you speak to a little bit on Simon, what the direction is for Zeker as their own brand and under the Geely umbrella to guide that digital design and, and give a certain experience to the people driving these? Yeah, I think the, the thing with the cars in China right now that it's focusing so much on experience which is which is great I mean that's something that we've loved and, and seen for many years I mean a lot of focus on the features was it before mm -hmm. uh, but now we're actually trying to merge them more into the experience part where like okay how can we do how can we do this how can we sit like this and actually have a time together and how can we with the digital side support that um, and I think 
within the Zika family and the Geely family, I mean, we have our own uh, software development, which is great. I mean, we, we do our own platform um, and we have collaborations with a lot of great companies uh, out in the industry as well. So, I mean, we can do a lot of fast improvements. We can work fast since we have the software uh, development in-house. We can do a lot of testing. We can do a lot of um, proof and errors and, and see like what works and what doesn't work and how can you do it better? Because that's what you want to do. You want to do it better. You kind of have to nowadays, too, with the competition. But can you speak to specifically how an EV platform with design and your role creates opportunities for you to kind of take risks? And especially in a vehicle like this, where it's it's very unique. And as you said, with the B pillar. But can you speak to that specific EV element and how you approach design? From a designing point of view, what this platform gives us is a lot of opportunities. For instance, uh, Simon talked earlier about different experiences. Uh, one thing that we really have focused on is sort of uh, different scenarios from could be small business owners, could be just you and I uh, doing certain activities or whatever. But for instance, if you if you want to go camping or glamping or whatever, we actually designed a, you can see here you have a direct light, this lighting here source, you can remove that, wow. you can put it outside and basically place it on the outside in your tent, whatever you want to do with it. And then of course, your car then becomes the center of the tension of the whole experience. Same thing here with the center console, you can move it backward and forward. If you want to, you can add sort of a table, you have these different um, yeah, hatches here that basically gives you an opportunity to sit down, have a lovely dinner, or I don't know, play cards or whatever you want, would like to do. Same thing here with the whole seating configuration. Like this wasn't available a few years ago, but with this whole, yeah, the platform that we're sitting in right now, it gives us this opportunity, which is great. And also like it, it opens up for a whole new different way of ownership of, of vehicles and yeah, just how you experience a car. Uh, so we're, we're, like from a design point of view, uh, we started designing this one, I think it's three years ago now. Uh, and from a sketching like face, we really wanted to create this lifestyle capsule on wheels. And it has now brought us here. And I think that's pretty remarkable. It is really cool to see what you have already and it already feels super f futuristic. But what do you foresee the future of this technology becoming and especially in the digital aspect of it like where can you take this type of technology with electrification i mean electrification is is the base of everything here um, and and of course you can do a lot and when i talk about experiences i think we have only seen a just small fraction of what you can do with experiences. I think we can expand. I mean, we can be within the car. We can go outside of the car. I mean, you saw the lights before. When you go out glamping, you can actually have this as the power source. So you can have a tent next to it, which is heated. You can do a lot of things. So the car is not just a car anymore, uh, which I think also, I mean, it's not the digital per se, but of course, the digital um, landscape helps out on these kind of things. Um, Further on, we go into the autonomous uh, district as well. I mean, of course, then that's where you actually will uh, utilize the digital landscape even more. And um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to the future. I am too. And one last thing is we know that obviously you have three vehicles on display here, but I also saw in the Waymo booth that they had their proprietary Zeker vehicle there. Did you guys have a hand in designing that specifically with Waymo? And can you talk a little bit more about while we're talking about autonomous vehicles, how that came to life and what it's really going to enable moving forward globally for EVs? Yeah, so basically the, the whole Waymo car or the Seeker RT as it's called uh, is the kind of predecessor to this one. So what we did was that when we designed that one together with the Waymo people, uh, we wanted to create something for the everyday human or for like regular customers because that one is mainly for fleet owners and autonomous drive as you know and also it's part of their kind of development process of their uh, software so i would say like from from seeker standpoint that was a testament that we actually could achieve something like this be pillarless that actually serves a different purpose than a regular car and then what this is is more of a statement of showing that yeah we have just arrived and this is just the start of something really exciting I could not agree more. And I really appreciate you two spending some time with us today to get a little bit more information. And 
you know, you have cars on display here in North America. I'm really hoping that uh, eventually we'll be able to see your cars uh, on the streets here in America. And I know you're probably not going to give me an answer as to when that's going to happen. We will see. We will see. <laughs> we will see is a good enough answer for me. But thank you both for spending some time with us and giving a little bit of insight. Yes.